Okay, 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 okay. It's Gertie Mac, and this crime story is about an Atlanta rapper who is on trial for a multitude of things, but also being accused of allegedly being a part of having a man killed back in 2015. Now I do these stories to show the consequences and downfalls in life when making bad decisions. And in this case, it was a lot of bad decisions that were made from the beginning to the end. But it also shows that when it comes to the street life, you can't have one foot in and one foot out. You either out or you in. Let's go. I'm bad down, man. Get with it, get rolled over, man. This is your nut, man. I'm letting you know it. Went for home. I'm going to be right there, nigga. I got one of the biggest bloods in America with me, my nigga. You did. Atlanta, Georgia, nigga. You did what I'm trying to say. Today, we're going to make it. Big shout out to Birdman and YMCMB Rich Gang. Why is it for life? Oh, How does it feel to make a meal when you ain't even signed in? As you can see behind me, there is still quite the active scene here in southwest Atlanta. McDaniel Street is still closed, and it has been for more than three hours. That's because there are shell casings up and down the street. Now, I'm told one of the men who was shot, a man in his mid-20s, is in critical condition, but that his status could change for the worse overnight. It appears that they were the intended target, but again, we're not sure the, the reason of the, uh, the shooting. Atlanta police are investigating why two men in their mid-20s and a 14-year-old boy were shot outside of a barber shop in southwest Atlanta Saturday night. Uh, right now, it doesn't appear that they had anything connection to the, to, to the business. They were just kind of hanging out is what we up here. Investigators say it appears to have been a drive-by shooting, and according to several witnesses we spoke with, an automatic weapon was used. I heard like some like a semi-automatic or something. And um, I can't run into the front of the gate because my Uncle Sammy be hanging. Sugar Thomas is one of dozens of residents who weren't allowed into their apartments while police investigated. K-9 units were used to locate additional shell casings and other evidence. 30 minutes, next be 45 minutes, then somebody said be four more hours. Really? I got to go work in the morning. We praying for the people that got shot other than that. We got to get in the house, though. Now, y'all know Young Thug is on trial with this RICO case. It's been up and down, and it's been long. Um, but one thing about a RICO, it ain't just about one charge. It's a whole lot of things that they're trying to accuse them of and get them on. Basically, they're trying to put Young Thug away forever, for a long time, with no chance of possibly getting out. They're trying to tie him in with a whole lot of stuff, even the YSL stuff. So, you know, you have a lot of people from YSL that used to be with Young Thug. They have basically kind of taken a stand and testified against him. But now, this particular point in the trial, they're talking about when Donovan Nut Thomas was shot and killed outside of Atlanta Barbershop. Now, if you don't know, this is Donovan Nut Thomas right here standing beside Young Thug. This is a moment when Young Thug was just kind of like Mean Birdman when him and Rich Homie Quan was um, basically assigned to Birdman as Rich Gang. When they was basically like a duo, they was like a little rap group and putting out a lot of hits back to back. Now, Donovan Nut Thomas in Atlanta, he was tapping into the music industry kind of like being a manager and all that. He was messing with YFA and Lucci, Rich Homie Quan, and Young Thug. So, allegedly, all these guys were friends at some point. Now, Young Thug and Donovan Nut Thomas allegedly had some kind of falling out. Now, all the details of what it's about, I don't know, and I don't want to speculate on it, but there's been a lot of different stories about what went on between those two. There are plenty videos online showing Young Thug showing nothing but love to Donovan Thomas, a.k.a. Nut. Now, like I say, what went wrong between those two? There's a lot of stories out there about this happened, this happened, this happened. All a lot of stories out there. But do anyone really know for sure? Only people that really is going to know what really went down between those two are the camps and everybody involved. And a lot of that stuff is coming out 
in this court process. Now, the latest thing with this Junta Rico case is that they have brought in Donovan Nut Thomas' mother to relive the moments of when her son was shot and killed in 2015 during a drive-by outside of an Atlanta barbershop. What happened to your son? Did he not die of natural causes? No, my son's death was a homicide. How did you find out your son had been harmed? I received a phone call. I visited him on um, birthdays, Father Day, um, and just days in general that I felt I wanted to just go there. Did your son's grave site remain as it did when it was first placed in the years following his murder? Um, was there ever a time where it was vandalized? Yes, it was vandalized. Um, January 19th, um, I, it was Father's Day. I drove up to my son's grave site, and once me and um, we drove up there, we um, noticed that the gravesite had been vandalized. And when I got out the car, um, I wasn't familiar with the word, but some of his other friends were in the word. It was something was spray painted, uh, slapped on his grave, and it was chiseled around the size of the head stump. For the record, Ms. Edmund, would you please spell out what is written across your son's tombstone? Um, it's, um, you spell it out. Spell it out. Um, S-L-A-T-T. -T. And it states the exhibit for making a fair and accurate depiction of the gravestone as you found it on Father's Day 2019. Yes, it is. Would you tell the jury for the record what color the letters S-L-A-T-T -T are written across your son's grave site. Uh, it's green. Before you saw that, did those letters have any significance to you personally? No, it did not. Did you ever see your son wearing those letters on any article of clothing that he wore? No, ma'am, I did not. Did you ever see your son prominently displaying green attire at any particular time? No, I did not. And do you know who it was that put S L A T T across your child's grave cell? No, I did not. No, I do not. Now, when it comes to beef, you know, back in the days, they keep it on wax and all that kind of stuff. I'm not saying nobody committed no crimes. I'm sure stuff happened back then. You know, all that kind of stuff back in those days. You know, you got the Tupac and Biggie thing. That's about the most thing that really got out of hand when you're talking about beef. But now, these days, when you're talking about beefing and stuff like that, these entourages in this generation, they take disrespect to a whole nother level. They go make video songs at your grave site, all kind of stuff. Like it, it's different now where it can't even be on wax no more. It can't just be a friendly competition. They go to your tombstone and allegedly put something like this on it. But nobody wins in this situation. Donovan Nut Thomas lost his life. And now Young Thug is facing a Rico case where he possibly you know, can spend the rest of his life in prison. All over a bunch of street stuff that went on. And now I understand when it comes to growing up in the hood, when it comes to street stuff, it's the environment that you grew up in. It's easier said than done and they're just saying walk out. And often these guys don't really listen to people who don't understand where they come from. But someday it has to change. Not saying everybody's going to change because you're still going to have people committing crimes. You're still going to have people who's going to have that hood mentality. That's just the life we live. But for these guys that at one point be two, two friends and on video hanging with each other, no telling what they could have had together, but no one would never know. But for Young Thug, he quote unquote made it out the hood, living a lifestyle, rich and famous. 
hit songs, working with Kanye West, working with a whole lot of people, had a big audience, a big following, even started his own label, providing opportunities from other guys for other guys from his hood in the Atlanta area, opportunity to change their life and their family life around. But, like I say, you can't have one foot in and one foot out. But y'all get in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and share this video. Holla.